Chanel, it's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and happy Memorial Day for those who are celebrating. Um, I probably should have said in the video that is coming, going to be posted soon today. Um, I'm uploading a uh, get um, get fit with me presents accountability. It's actually quite, it's not quite that way this time around. It's a little bit more of a recap of how the holiday weekend has went so far for me, but um. Yeah, today's a decent day. Still, honestly, Saturday was easily the best day of the weekend, and I knew it was going to be that, so I got a lot of my things done then. So for those who are interested, check that out. Um, it'll be on the channel. Um, well, it's, it should already be on the channel by the time you see this. Also, um, some content update. Um, I will. Um, I think I am going to be reviewing The Real Housewives of Dubai, um, just because I don't really have any other shows to review at this moment and I am dialing back on doing the um, yoga series um, get fit with me, the regular get fit with me and I'm not also not gonna be doing my hair as much this summer because for those who don't know I am full force back in like my training mood so uh, probably about time I do get back to doing the yoga and stuff I'll be looking different like physically because hopefully um, I won't Get my weight goals in order and get back down to my um, training weight. So that's kind of the update with that. But that's not why we're here. We're actually here for our review of Summer's House Martha's Vineyard um, Season 2. And this is Episode 10 and this is Reunion. Now, I was, I, I will be honest. Um, I was expecting more out of this reunion. I know it was a last minute thrown together reunion, but I was hoping to not be able to tell that that's what it was and it, you could tell it was. And I didn't think I was gonna repeat what other content creators have said. But I really wish Bravo would hear me out, hear me loud and clearly. I know Andy Cohen is like the face of Bravo. Can we please have someone else as a reunion host for the future? Because there are a lot of topics that he brushed over. And really, this reunion, I never thought I would say this, but like most of the reunions that he has for the housewives are three parts. It could be broken down to two, with the exception of a few of them. Like the Real Housewives of Miami this past season, and then the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. The three part actually was a, one of the only few times I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But all the other ones really can be like, for example, Real Housewives of Potomac. That could have been a one-part reunion. It did not need to be three parts. Same thing with even the Real Housewives of Atlanta. That could have been one part. This one, I think there should have been two parts. It ended and it was over with, and I still have questions. <laughs> you know, because what it was was, and this is part of the reason, part of the issue, is they didn't have reunion season one. So they're combining season one and season two issues together for one hour for one hour reunion. And that's not enough. And you're actually also not getting to everyone. I feel like not everyone was really talked to during this reunion, really. Like Shanice was just kind of there. Like she had to chime in in order to be kind of there. Um, and I'll even say, th say the same thing even um, about Alex. There's like so many dynamics and relationships to me for this reunion that was not touched upon. And I kind of want to get more into it as I give you feedback of the review, as I give you the review, and we'll go from there. And I'm going to try to go in order the reunion, but then I'm also going to touch back on each cast member because I'm also going to use this opportunity to um, kind of state my opinion. Do I want them back? Do I not want them back? what well, well, I like for them to change and all that because I didn't do that with the reunion look so much. It was a much shorter, funner video when it came to the reunion looks. So we're going to do all that with this. So. Okay, so first of all, this reunion was filmed at the um, Watch What Happens Live set. And although I'm disappointed by that, the first summer's house, the first time they had a reunion, it was filmed that way too. So this isn't that non-off par. Um, I'm hoping next year, if they have another season, which I really, really hope they do, because I very much enjoy this show. This is actually kind of one of my favorite shows to watch. Um, not necessarily my favorite to review, because it's a little bit more difficult to review. 
but um, because there's so many moving pieces, and also part of it was a lot of things were not really resolved from the previous season, so it was not as fun of a show. And I guess also the reason why, let me go back to my point about how I feel like this reunion, I was kind of, I was pretty disappointed by the reunion. I'm not sure if things got resolved. And the whole point of a reunion is for things to be resolved so that next season can, can start off fresh. And I don't feel like nearly enough was resolved. Um, I'm hoping part of the reason why it wasn't resolved is for the people where things weren't completely resolved. There's a cash shakeup and they're kind of not as much of an issue. But I only see a couple people who could probably go. I Yes, I know there's quite a few people that we want to go. I think the problem is I'm not sure if the network wants them to go or Andy Cohen for that matter. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, the order of seating. And by the way, I apologize. Um, my allergies are still just like crazy. It rained pretty much all day yesterday. And for those who know, I'm very much allergic to mold. Even with me getting allergy shots, it's just a problem. Um, anyway. And if I do that, I'm sorry. I'm trying to not do that. But anyway, so this is the order of the seating for the reunion. So we have Preston at the end. And I don't agree with the seating, by the way, either. Um, I'm, let me share my thoughts once I get to that. Joelle's next to, so Preston at the end. Joelle, Nick, Summer, Jasmine, Andy's in the middle. So Jasmine's sitting next to Andy on one side. And then on the other side, we have Bria, Jordan, Shanice, Amir, and Alex at the end. Um, Alex, I agree with him being at the end. He didn't have as much going on. Amir, I really think he should have been on the opposite side at the end. Um, because I don't think Preston should be at the end. <laughs> Preston had a little bit more going on between the... And maybe they're doing the um, reunion seating based off both seasons. Because Preston Connell's is their season one as kind of the favorite, but like the voice of reason, but he didn't really have much going on season one. Season, this last season, he had it was, he had a lot more to say. He was kind of a little bit more part, had a little bit more conflict. Um, also, to side note, I could tell that the season was cut short because there's a lot of conflict. That was, there was some conflict that was addressed, addressed during this reunion that we did not see on the show. And I, as a, as a, as someone who's a fan of the show, that's frustrating because I don't really know how to gauge things now because I'm just like, well, should Preston be the family? Should should Preston be the favorite still? And we'll get to that when I get to it, but there's there's that. Anyway, so I think Preston should not have been. Right, no. So I actually almost forgot to get to it. So let's talk about right now. One of the other things that was brought up was um, Preston and um, Jasmine's relationship. Um, Jasmine I has had mentioned during her conflict when she was talking about the lack of support when it came to the house, as well as like her feeling alienated by the house. Um, the fact that she expected more of uh, Preston to be the, pers the person who brings everyone together. And um, Preston didn't quite agree with her and didn't see it that way, even though you know, Jasmine's like, you're the reason why you know all, you know, you know the women that you know now. And I guess two things could be true. Like, I do think it is unfair that they do has, have these expectations for Preston to be the peacekeeper, the mediator at all times. And also the other thing could be, yeah, Preston could have done a little bit more because we do definitely, um, throughout this season especially, we did see some favoritism when it came to um, Preston, but we're human. We're all going to do that. We're going to ride through the people that we are the closest with. And I think what Jasmine has misunderstood or maybe didn't know is just because Preston and her husband are lying brothers and they were close at one point in time doesn't equate to you and Preston having that same kind of closeness and relationship. And because this was such a short reunion, this was not discussed. So that's why I even said that too, as far as like, should Preston be the, the fan favorite or not? What's your opinions on that? Um, leave that in the comments. It should not be at the end. That's one thing. I think Shanice should have been at the end also. So 
honestly, this is how I would have, would have done it. I would have had, actually I would have bumped Alex up one too. So I would have had Shanice and Jordan on the ends. Jordan didn't really have much going on. She was on mute most of the season. Um, and then from there, I would have Amir. And I'll have Amir sit next to... I'll have Amir sit next to... Um, I, I guess it doesn't really matter which, which side, but I would have Amir next af after... Amir's spot, I think, is a good spot, actually, now I look back at it. Um, but honestly, if he didn't have his girlfriend, he would be at the very end, too, because I feel like his girlfriend was more of the conflict than it was him. You know? Um, but yeah, Amir is a good spot, and then after that, then Alex. And then from there, I would have had... Um, hmm. There, from there, I would have had, like, you know what, let me be honest here. I don't, I understand why Jasmine got the first chair, because she's kind of like the face of the show, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think she should have been on the first, I don't think she should have been first seat. <laughs> um, I would have then from there had Nick. Is at the correct spot. Put Joelle on the other side of the couch. Yeah, I think Summer and Bria should have been the ones, should have been both the people who had the first seat. Because Summer clearly had the most conflict out of everyone in the house. So, I mean, she definitely earned first seat. I mean, she probably doesn't like that she earned first seat, but she earned first seat. And then, um, Noelle next to her and Nick. I think too, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that would have been the order of things. But anyway, um, without further ado, let's get back more into the review itself. But so, um, yeah, let's, let's talk about how Andy greeted them, the pleasantries and all that, and then we'll get to what happened there. Okay. So, basically, um, we start through, um, so Andy does his normal thing where he greets everyone one, one by one by one, and he shades, <laughs> Andy shades Summer um, regarding Shanice. Um, she's like, so, um, Shanice, do you think that you're, you're dressed okay this time around? Um, just kind of throwing shade. Not really towards Shanice, more towards Summer and her comment about how Shanice is like the worst dress. And Shanice is like, oh, we're starting early? And, oh, yeah, it was funny. Um, and then the last thing that, um, you know, Andy kind of shaded at the beginning was Amir. It's like, so Amir, do you still have your penis? <laughs> In reference to um, the, the um, comment that... Amir said about how his girlfriend would cut his ping off if he was to act up um, while being in the house. And, um, okay, and then this is the other thing that we find out. We found out that, like, so we knew Amir did, um, I think initially someone made the Lorena Bobbitt reference. And Amir had to do research to figure out who Lorena Bobbitt is. And, Maybe because I'm older, I know exactly who that is because I was around when all that happened. Is that a normal thing for people who are his age or younger? They don't know who that is? Put it in the comments. Let me know. Or is he just really that dumb? And speaking of, Amir got my nerves during this whole entire reunion. I knew he would. And y'all already know, fast forward. We're going to fast forward real quick on this. He can go. I don't want him to come back. I know Andy kind of has a thing for him. But I also noticed Andy was shading him a lot during this reunion. So 
maybe his thing for him has kind of faded. And I hope so, because I don't really want him back. Anyway, so the reunion kind of starts talking about Noelle Summer and Alex Love Triangle. And um, right away, Summer, because um, Andy br brings up what Alex said during his Watch What Happens Live about how um, Summer's kind of acting like a stalker, you know, kind of doing the weirdo stuff that she's been doing the whole season. And Summer, this is one thing about Summer that I need you to work on. And I think you are, you know, you had remorse and you were embarrassed at looking at yourself on TV, but you're still lacking this thing called accountability. And it makes it where you're still not quite likable because the accountability still is not there. And also, too, if there is a little bit of a cash shakeup for this show, I'm going to need more people on this show who hold themselves accountable. Um, it's like she says, sorry. I know this, and I said this before with Summer. A lot of times when she says sorry, she says sorry not because she's really sorry. It's more or less she wants to stop talking about it. So she says it so that you just stop talking about it. And it's more of a brush off versus actually trying to acknowledge the wrongdoing or any of that. And <clears throat> so Alex is like, I stand by what I said. And <clears throat> Summer is still doing this talking in circles thing. Saying like, well, you were acting like an F boy. And like, Jasmine did come to Alex's defense and I respect it. Because like, he's like, I'm not an F boy though. Like, if I wanted to be that, I could be that, but I wasn't that towards you. And then Summer, and then Noelle got on, got on too. So really, Summer kind of got torn up between like Alex and Noelle. Because Noelle was like, Okay, you keep saying that you already told me that you slept with this man. You did not tell me until I confronted you and asked for specific details. And because Ale because Summer in her weird Delulu mind thought um, we're hanging out with each other automatically translates to we slept with each other. And I don't know what world is that true. And even Andy called it. I was like, um, that's not the same thing. And he, she's like, yeah, I know that now. I'm like, you know that now. At your grown age, you know that now. And I really do hope Summer takes a break from this show, goes to therapy, and learns how to communicate better because her communication skills is just, is basula. It's not good. Um, and through this reunion, she was trying to, so she got defensive when Noelle called her out. I was like, well, no, you did not tell me this. And then she's like, well, after the fact, you pursued it. And honestly, after the fact, that's on Noelle after that. That's not, and that's not even what no one's talking about. It's the, it's the main fact that you said that you already told her when you did it. And Noelle ate her up and like basically was like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. And because um, at first when Alex was talking, um, Basically, um, Summer tried to interrupt Alex during his explanation, and he checked her right away. He was like, Andy actually asked me, so I'm going to finish this response, and then you could talk next. I was like, oh, yes, Alex, yes. <laughs> and he did so eloquently, no raising a voice, no nothing. He basically just used logic. He's like, look, Andy asked me the question. I'm going to finish answering the question because she started trying to chime in, trying to save herself because she knew the answer was him telling the truth was not what she wanted to hear and wanted to be out there for the world. But the truth is what it is. And then when Summer was trying to talk to explain what she had going on, Summer tried to do the same thing to Noelle, but Noelle was like, I'm going to let you finish. But anyway, the point is you still lying. You lying. You lying. You lying. I was like, dang, in both counts, she's got eaten up. So that's kind of a little bit, that was kind of the main thing that they talked about um, during this first segment. And then from there, we go to Amir and Al, Amir and um, Natalie and the lack of trust. No one cares. Um, basically, everyone raises their hand. Um, well, um, Andy asked the group, 
you know, how many of y'all think Nally's good for a mirror? Really, no one thinks. Oh, the answer is nobody. Um, you have some people who kind of halfway did, like, eh, maybe for the moment, but not long term. And um, Amir's demeanor, this whole reunion is kind of annoying and kind of just like, he, he's definitely in defense mode. And it's all about defending his girl, defending his girl. And my whole thing is that what I didn't appreciate that wasn't called out nearly enough is it wasn't just your girl that did that. You also were doing it too. You were in women's business. And that was not called out at all during this reunion. And I found that extremely annoying. Anyway, let's go on from there. Also, the other thing that was mentioned is that Amir and Natalie, even though they've only been together for a year and some change, they brought a house together. And he's almost 30. Does anyone see anything wrong with that? As someone who's had experience with living with others before other on my significant others before. That's the one thing I am not doing right away. Um, my ex, so I do have a situation where my ex and I, um, one of my exes, we did have a house together, but I'm glad we, we didn't do that until like probably four years into the relationship, actually three years, you know, it took some time and we've already lived together at that point for, this part was the fast part for like two and a half years. Uh, by the way, that was in my late twenties, early thirties. So that kind of does check out. But yeah. As someone who's rushed moving in with someone before, I would not recommend. That is a zero out of 10. Like I would not recommend doing that at all. Don't, don't ever do that. And I guess he's going to have around and find out. Um, and then Noel called out Amir about his comments about the girls wanting him in the house. Noel was on fire. Noel, even though she wasn't addressed much during this reunion, she made her presence known. She understood the assignment, um, if you will. She definitely did. She's like, so how are you going to say we all wanted you in this house? Um, and <laughs> Amir had to backpedal. He's like, well, it might, but he did have, we didn't know until after the fact he did have a valid reason for somewhat saying that. Apparently, Shanice flirted with him. Child, I keep remembering more and more as I'm editing this video. So the other thing that was kind of um, brushed up on but didn't really get addressed is that Shanice was happy that she was not um, considered the crazy person anymore when um, Summer and Alex were going back and forth because of, you know, what happened season one. And then it got, it did get rehashed during the season as far as her being called the crazy one. And also the other thing that I will mention that was not addressed during this reunion is the smoke that um, Jordan and Alex have towards each other. I am hoping that the reason why these things weren't addressed is because maybe these three these three cast members might be getting shaked up and one of them might be exiting or two of them might be exiting. So maybe that's why it was kind of rushed over based off the performance of the reunion. But that was the other thing I did notice with this reunion that was not addressed. Yeah. Even though Shanice literally flirts with everybody. But Shanice did shoot him a little bit of bail. She's like, yeah, it might have been my comment. I think I drunkly said I wanted to F you. But I don't really want you. <laughs> so that was how that segment ended and then it went to commercial break and then the next thing so then the next thing was heavily about summer and her spiraling and um she still is not she's she apologized to the group again but she's still not holding herself completely accountable so long story less long Oh, and also Alex tried to check her a couple times, like, too, like, look, just because you're going through things in life, do you think you can't be going through things in life and still be a good person? <laughs> and I'm like, say for the people in the back. And she's like, I know, I just didn't know how. And I'm like, that's a character issue. That's. That says a lot. I don't think she knows that how that sounded, but that sounds like you you're you lack character. 
That's what that sounds like. And I hope you don't, I, hopefully you watch this back and realize the way you're, you handle yourself in this reunion. And you really do a better job of holding yourself accountable because you're still not doing that all the way. And just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean you need to lash out. You need to figure out some coping skills and then go from there, you know? So basically, Summer and Bria are good, but Summer, but Bria, Bria's like, Bria and Summer are a lot alike, but the only difference is Bria knows how to keep her hands to herself, and Bria also is um, problematic. Bria's problematic in a way when it comes to her conflicts. She doesn't hold herself accountable, but she does forgive people. Like, that is one thing that is a good thing that I know is about Bria. She, she seems like I, all the women, she doesn't hold a grudge. She's pretty easy to forgive. Even though she, um, easy, she, she seems like she forgives fairly easily. Uh, pretty much most of the women on the show. Um, she doesn't seem like the type that holds a grudge. Um, whereas some of the others in this group, you could tell they hold a grudge. And some are included. Um, so, at least there was that. Um, but anyway, so Bria's... Bria and Summer are good, um, which, by the way, that's another thing that was annoying. Because we're talking about Bria and Summer, but yet, why couldn't you have that same energy, Bria, for Mariah? By the way, Mariah was not mentioned at once in this reunion, which I found that extremely annoying. Phil wasn't mentioned at once in this reunion. And there's a lot of moving parts with that, a lot of story, a lot of questions left unsolved with that, including people, the way people acted during the season with them coming back and how Amir handled that whole situation. So those were a couple of things right there that was not touched upon not once during this reunion and won't be clearly. Um, Anyway, then from there, we talk about Summer and Jordan. And because you, we saw in the season, you know, Summer made that comment about how her relationships with, with um, Jordan and Preston, their friendship is so heavy and she wants something lighthearted. And we found out that that was really Summer's own doing. Summer was not being truthful or honest with her friends on what's going on with her. So therefore, it was always going to be heavy because she's holding on to things that they know nothing about. And that's what happened there. Um, what else? Um, we do briefly talk about Jordan and the alopecia of it all. Um, it got kind of brushed over and that was it. Um, they didn't really talk much about the Freaknik party, which was kind of one of the highlights of the show. Like, they brushed on it a couple times, but that was it. They didn't talk much about any of the parties. They didn't really talk much about anything that was fun. Yeah. So, it's kind of, that was also disappointing. I will say that. Um, because the show itself, and for those who watch just this reunion, reun reunion only, Please do not judge the show based off of this reunion and even based off the final episode. The show is an amazing show. Please go back and watch the show. I just think that because the host was not the best host and he brushed over topics too quickly and all the topics that were talked about were all heavy topics and none of them were about the fun, this is what we get. And we should have had two parts and not the one. Anyway, so then we talk about Summer, Jordan, and Preston. Summer and Preston are still good. Jordan and Summer, they're in a rough patch right, right now. Um, and then that kind of got brushed over again. So we, we don't even know why about that either. And then we found out that Summer did figure out who her dad is. Um, via, and it turned out it was a guy that was on Facebook. He lied. She took a 23 me test and it was that guy. Um, she has no relationship with them, but she does have a sense of closure. Um, and that was after Andy had to coach her through and said that's a sense of closure. She was still was being kind of miserable about that too. And that is one thing with Summer, my conclusion is with her, is she's a miserable person. 
And until she fixes that, there's no fixing her. So every time she pretends to be happy, I'm sorry, it's an act. And that's literally what Bria and Shanice even mentioned in the season finale. That whenever she tries to pretend to be happy and lighthearted, it is not you. Because you're in a dark place. And it's okay to say you're in a dark place and just be yourself. And not pretend to be happy. Because when you pretend to be happy and people can read your energy and read that you're not good, it comes off really fake and disingenuous. And that wasn't really called out at all during the reunion. And again, Shanice barely even existed in this reunion. Um, other than when she chimed in here and there and then her back and forth with Summer. But if it wasn't for the Summer thing, you know, it really wouldn't be a thing. So... But that's kind of what happened here. Okay, so then next we have um, Preston and Bria. And this is the part that was frustrating for me. Because we saw a little bit of the dynamic between Preston and Bria on the show. But because this is a show that's only really filmed, you know, it's only 15 days. There's a lot of stuff between Preston and Bria that's being talked about at this reunion that happened behind the scenes between the show. And so as an audience member, I'm confused. I don't know how to follow it. And if we're going to talk about this, I kind of need more details than what I'm just told during this reunion. If this was such an issue, this should have could have been brought up while you were in the house that week. Or two weeks you were there. But because it's now getting brought up about y'all relationship for real, for real. I'm kind of lost. And honestly, to me, it comes off as you really only put this on the reunion so that Preston has segment. And this, to me, wasn't the segment that you needed to give Preston. I feel like you could have focused on Preston losing his dad. You could have went more in depth with that. You could have went more in depth with when Donald was there, his fiance, and how he navigated that, and kind of briefly talk about him and Bria, but not go so heavily in depth between Bria and, you know, him, their relationship. And because then the Bria in South of France incident when she got arrested kind of came up. Um, which, by the way, one thing I also will say too when it comes to the show overall. Out of all the shows on Bravo, I feel like this show was also always had things happening when when things are culturally relevant. So, for example, when we're watching, we were watching the Freaknik episode. That was around the time where Freak Freaknik documentary was happening. Like it always was timed when certain things were happening, and even with this reunion. I mean, Nicki Minaj just got arrested out in Europe, you know, and then like in um, actually in Amsterdam. And then the other thing that happened recently is Kelly Rowland and how she was treated in France. So it the way this show always has something happening, I feel like a lot of reality shows, when you watch it, it's like you're going backwards like you're rehashing things that happened like six months ago and i feel like out of all the shows this is one of the only shows where it doesn't feel like other than what's going on with their personal lives it seems like everything is somewhat culturally relevant so i i, I wanted to call that out um, and give them more of their flowers because although this reunion was lackluster the show again was excellent um they talk a little bit more about Bria and Simon's relationship. The other thing, the thing that they didn't talk about nearly enough is that Bria acts like a brat and lacks accountability. They never brought that up that much. She, Bria got away so scot-free. Bria had a great reunion. <laughs> she had a great reunion. She got away scot-free. Completely scot-free. I was like, wow. Wow. Um, but I do want her to stay on the show. Unpopular opinion for a lot of you. I want her to stay on the show because she does bring conflict. Um, and she holds her own when she does bring, like she, 
this reunion, when things were getting thrown her way, she held her own. She didn't do the walk away thing. She she studied the tapes and figured it out. So I will give her that. She had a she had a good reunion. Um, but then the subject came up about Simon using her for clout. Um, Bria doesn't agree because Bria doesn't know what clout means. <laughs> Because Bria's argument was that Simon has money. He's not using me for clout, but he does like the attention of camera. That That's clout. <laughs> so, and everyone kind of called out like, honey, that, that literally is the definition of clout chasing. Okay. You can have money and be a clout chaser. ended um and we'll go on to the next thing okay so next we talk about jasmine and her pregnancy and um and we also talk about her lack of connection with the group and again this is what's also another one that was frustrating because a lot of this stuff was behind the scenes stuff and it kind of had me looking at you preston kind of funny i don't know a lot of y'all looking a little funny and like the way y'all are treating or were treating um jasmine so jasmine because there was no reunion the season season after season one jasmine had a lot of backlash with this group because jasmine was doing doing the most season one it's like she was trying so hard to be the matriarch of this show and she was trying so hard to force conflict she was overly trying to produce this show season one it was getting on everyone's nerves including us the viewers we all saw it we all knew and then silas the, the combination of her and silas who was her husband annoying 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 um but we did respect that she was a matriarch but because towards the end of that season she did course correct it or try to but I think she rubbed people in the house such the wrong way that she had a lot of backlash after the fact. So um, there was a vote with the group. Who misses Silas there? No one missed Silas there. <laughs> I found that kind of telling. And um, she, um, and then the question came up with Jasmine, like, who supported her the least during her pregnancy journey? And it was Jordan. And she feels away about that still. Because her and Jordan still are not in a good place. But they're still not really communicating much on the reunion stage. So we don't really know what that's about. So it was, that's the other thing that's frustrating too. Because that did not get resolved. Sorry. Another thing. So in regards to um, Jordan's off-putting comment about she's hoping that it was Silas' first experience being a father when um, Jasmine announced that she was pregnant with the group. Um, Jordan is still claiming that it was a joke and it wasn't meant to be shady or anything like that. And I'm sorry, Jordan, no one's believing that. It literally came off very jealous. Like your your face, your tone, it said it all. It did not come off as jokey joke. It did not come off as even a dry joke. Like as a fan, as someone who's a fan of dry humor, it didn't even come off as that. It literally came off as you were shading her. And I feel like Jasmine and for whatever reason, I don't feel like you're, I don't feel like Jordan was pressed enough when it came to that. She should have been held, her foot should have been, her feet should have been held to the fire when it came to that off-putting comment because I felt a way, and I'm not even a mother, um, if someone was to insinuate that my potential baby daddy um, is, well, acting like a baby daddy and not my husband. So there's that. That did not get resolved. And then Simon and Silas are not communicating and they're fraternity brothers. And we don't know why that is either. So that's the other thing that didn't get resolved. It's just kind of just there. And then um, Jasmine and Shanice had conflict too. Because it turned out Shanice was one of the main reasons why. So there's this whole thing that happened in between the season where the cast went on a trip to Jamaica. And... Um, the group, a lot of the group did not want to invite, um, did not want to invite Jasmine. 
Shanice only mentioned she didn't want to invite Jasmine because she just didn't want the conflict. But I called BS on that and there was no elaboration on that. And that's kind of how that ended. So it was a lot of just open-ended things, which hopefully they at least address it in season three. But I'm kind of confused because a lot of this was behind the scenes stuff that happened in between because there was no reunion the first season. And this is what happens when we don't have a reunion. There's just a lot of loose ends. And as a fan, I kind of just like, I don't, I'm lost. I don't know what is really going on. Are you jealous that, you know, Jasmine is kind of being, is kind of the face of the show? Or is it what you said that she was doing too much and she never really apologized, which I can't see her not apologizing. And I feel like she did. After that, um, we discuss Nick and his handsiness. And um, I was also kind of disappointed about how this even went. Um, I think it should have been spoken about a lot more about the ramifications of their words and how much that can impact his livelihood potentially, you know, especially in this climate that we're in with the ditties of them all. Um, you don't want to have any type of situation where it can be amplified, especially him as a black man, where it could, you know, allude to something sinister, you know? And I mean, I don't know Nick personally and outside of me having a crush on him because you already know. For those who've watched my reviews, you already know I got a huge crush on Nick. Um, for one, he's a runner and that's like kind of my type anyway. I usually typically date other runners because I'm a runner. And <laughs> it's easier to um, navigate life when you're, you know, with someone who's similar to you. And I've tried to date people who are non-runners and I've always found, at least for me, um, it doesn't work very well because I do sacrifice a lot of my time, energy, and effort into the hobby that I love, which is running and health and fitness and wellness. And for me, if you're someone who doesn't align with that, it's hard to really navigate personal time with that because a lot of my personal time is dedicated to that. And I find for me, it's easier to date someone whose personal time is also that. And it really doesn't even matter how fast the person who I'm dating is. Actually, you know, if I'm dating someone who's faster, I'll cycle with you because I also do triathlons as well. So I can use that as my triathlon training. I can do my cycling, easy day training while you're running. And I'll do that with you. And that's the way that I could compromise quality time. Or let's say um, I'm doing a speed workout. We can do a speed workout together because we don't have to be really doing the speed workout together. We could just go to the track and do it. You know what I mean? Um, and But that's kind of what I'm getting at. So outside of that, though, my <laughs> crush on Nick, I, and this is, I don't know these people. But I just don't see that him being handsy and touchy is him being malicious. And I will say this, the thing that has not been called out nearly enough. It was called out at least when it comes to Bria and her flirting. But what who skated out of that kind of clean is... What about Shanice's like constant need to be nude around people who are... What about her lack of discernment on her constantly being nude? And prancing around with her titties out. I mean, to me, it's like, it's, they're kind of a similar thing. Like, you can't be okay with one but not the other. Like, it's, they're, they're, they're in the same ken to me, to me. Um, I, I, Jordan did try to, like, you know, preach that the reason why she ever felt away wasn't his actions, it's just the fact that his, that, it's because he has a girlfriend. And I'm like, Okay, I get that. Um, and Nick and Bria kind of went back and forth with it. And I think Bria um, did take some ownership of what she said. Um, not as much as I would like, but in her own Bria way. So um, it kind of got, you know, resolved a little bit. 
But what was kind of interesting and what I will say, and I'm glad it was called out during this reunion, is the lack of, you know, Natalie being part of the conversation when Natalie started the whole thing. Because the women, what the women made clear, and I kind of knew this, I could kind of tell, they were going to keep it in house. It was literally going to be girl talk. It wasn't going to lead to anything. It wasn't even going to be a conflict. It was just going to be like, kind of similar to how like Jordan and um, Summer talked about it amongst themselves. And, um, you know, and weren't going to make a big deal out of it, even though they're the ones who actually gets, you know, out of everyone, those are the two that Nick actually are the most handsy with, but he's actually the closest to them. Um, it wasn't going to be a big thing because even when it was brought up originally and they talked about it, it wasn't a big thing. They talked about it. They understood, like, you know, Nick didn't wasn't too offended. It was like a whole thing where he's like, okay, I get it. And it was respectable and it was done. It was not a potential smearing of him, you know, potentially cheating on his significant other if they were with it type thing. Like, and that's what Bria alluded to, which was a huge problem. But also, I think the difference is, is that we kind of already knew this is what Bria does. Bria puts 20 on 10, so it wasn't as annoying. Um, the other thing, too, that I will say is that Amira's being annoying this whole entire time. Amir was Nally's representative the whole entire time. And what bothers me the most, and even Joelle, um, Joelle mentioned it, she's like, she did not have good intentions. It was clear she didn't have good intentions. She did that to be messy. And for someone who doesn't live in the house, who isn't in the house, you did a whole lot to not care or want to be part of this group, which is right. She did. And, um, yeah, Joelle ate Amir up and Amir had no accountability, none. And the thing that wasn't mentioned is that Amir had just as much of a part in this as Natalie. It wasn't just Natalie. And that was not mentioned, and I found that quite annoying. Um, also, too, the other thing that I found pretty annoying about this as well is that Nick did check Amir, but he did it in the most classiest way. And I still think he went easy on him, but at the same time, Nick just reminds us that he's a class act. And the way he handled this, even that tells you that he isn't the type who would do, who would be malicious and, you know, do the things that could potentially be what they were kind of, you know, what could have been painted. And that's, that's the thing. So, yeah. Oh, also the beginning when they were doing the introductions, we did find out that Nick did the London Marathon and I think the Berlin Marathon back to back. I don't remember because, okay, <laughs> I, as someone who does distance running, I have never really had the desire to do the majors because I'm personally trying to do all 50 states. <laughs> which is actually a lot more daunting than doing all the world majors. Um, I'm currently though, not to toot my own horn, I'm currently at 12 states though. So I've done, I've done a marathon in 12 states. I've done more than 12 marathons though, but I've done 12 marathons. I mean, I've done a marathon in 12 states so far. And I'm also trying to do 50 states for half marathons too. So excuse to like see the states more than once. So, um, I do want to do an international marathon at some point, um, but I don't necessarily want to do all the majors just because that isn't really my ministry. I love that that's a lot of people's challenge. Challenge, And actually, it's, I would say it's probably easier to do the majors in the 50 states because my body's going to be beat up about time I'm doing all these 50 states, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> but anyway, we also, last but not least, the other thing that we did find out is that Nick and Tasia broke up. They did break up. Um... And I am sorry, um, Nick, truly I'm sorry for that for you if you do see this video. Um, because even though, all jokes aside, as much as I like, you know, flirting and shooting my shot, if you will, I don't want, you know, someone to lose potential 
partner that could have been the one for them. And, um, and the show was a part of it. He did say that. But that wasn't the only reason. Um, but the show definitely was each part of it. And he does feel bad. He feels like he kind of embarrassed her. And I will say this, Nick. I don't think you embarrassed her this season. I think you did so much better this season. I think you were... you uh, All the cast members, I think you have use this platform to help you see you know what changes you can make to be a better man or a better person and from f the first season to the second season I appreciate the change I appreciate the growth and that's just me being honest it's not because I have a crush it's really from what I see on television I love that you are making positive light with this platform so, um, heart, my heart goes out to you and, um, yeah, hopefully there's another season because after the time pass, I probably am going to continue my shooting my shot. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, but that is, um, what happened there. Um, again, I was kind of disappointed in this segment because I think Andy could have even called it out too and kind of stepped in because he has similar accusation or had similar accusations going on. Uh, how it doesn't feel good to be accused of inappropriate sexual behavior. Because um, flirting for a man can lead to other things easily. Um, especially in this climate. It, it doesn't take much and it can ruin your reputation even though you may not have actually done anything or you had the great intentions or you're just a touchy-feely person. And to me, I think he's just a touchy-feely person. And I get it because I'm kind of the same way. I'm kind of a flirt. Like, I always joke about how Shanice and I are a lot alike, but like, I'm like a much more evolved version of Shanice. Because <laughs> I feel like that was probably me in like my 20s. But I just didn't have the, I didn't have the body confidence to do everything she was doing. But I kind of was outside like that though. But <laughs> anyway, moving on. Okay, so last part of this reunion. And you could tell it's kind of last part because they just, they were wrapping up things. And again, I did, I already said this before. They had a lot more things they could speak about and talk about. But they didn't really go there just because they didn't have enough time. And you could tell the put this reunion together at the last minute, even though the cast themselves looked wonderful. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, all them sitting down, it it worked, it hit. Um, so the outfits, even though I did the critique and they were you know, all standing together, sitting down, they look like a beautiful couple. I mean, not couple, wow. They look like a beautiful cast. That's totally what I meant. Um, anyway, so we get into Nick and the tattoos. I already said I was going to not flirt until the next season. So I'm going to move on. Because otherwise I will. Because, <laughs> yes, I was one of those people who was swooning over Nick with the tattoos. But I was also swooning over Nick before those tattoos. Let's make that perfectly clear. But those tattoos did do something different. I was like, oh. My 20-something-year-old um, inside of me that, like, loves bad boys was into it. <laughs> I be trying to turn that girl off, like, because she is a girl and not a woman like I am. But my toxic tendencies of going for bad boys was like, oh, wow. With the tattoos, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, um, and then the, um, this is where Summer Shanice got into it over the worst stress situation. And this is the other thing that kind of did not get talked. They, they kind of brushed over Shanice and her lack of having a job. Um, they didn't talk about much at all. And I think they should or could have went to a little bit more. Um, but they did towards the end a little bit. Cause shout out to Brooke, the Brooke Ashley. <laughs> Because when they said it was, at, when they said it was Brooke's question, I was like, I know where Brooke it is, Brooke Ashley. Because she's been saying it on her channel over and over again. She's like, so how you, and this was to Shanice, and it was shady. She was like, so how are you, Shanice, going to be bragging about 
all these high quality men you have around you, but you, you, you can't afford to buy any clothes or anything like that. And she's like, it, shady, a shady thing. And the thing is, Shanice knew this question was coming up because, hello, you would, because Brooke Ashley has said it constantly. And I think has even said it like to Shanice in her timeline when they've done like live things or whatever. Um, because, yeah, I think for whatever reason, Brooke Ashley compares her to Ashley Darby. And I don't think that's a fair comparison. I can see the resemblance, but I don't think Shanice is really like that. Um, I don't see Ashley Darby when I see Shanice. I see that she can't really dress similar to her. So I will say this. I'm, even though Summer had, de had a horrible season, two things can be true. Was it mean for Summer to say that Shanice can't dress considering the circumstance of her not having a job? Absolutely. Can Shanice dress? No. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Let's call a thing a thing. But also, too, Summer can't really dress. I'm sorry. Half of the cast can't really dress, especially the women. Um, the best dressed cast members on this show are actually the men. Preston and Nick are the two best dressed on the show at all times. And then Noelle is like, Noelle is usually the, the next best dress. And she's new. And Bria is a hit or miss. Same thing with Jordan, hit or miss. Same thing with Jasmine, hit or miss. Um, Summer looks really, really good with this reunion, but her face, she had to fix, she needs to fix it. Like, you can't be mean mugging when you look beautiful. Like, why are you doing that? Like, smile for the camera a little bit or something. Um, and Shanice, just, that just isn't her ministry. Her being best dressed is just not going to be her ministry. And I will um, give Shanice credit when it comes to checking Summer. It's like, how are you going to call me the worst dress, but then ask to borrow something for me the next day to wear? I agree with that. I also agree with that. But, oh, to um, Shanice's response to the Brooke Ashley... So her response was like, I don't sleep with these men for money. <sighs> okay, not to put my tea out there, but I'm going to put my tea out. Okay. In my younger years, <laughs> I have dated some guys that are doing well for themselves. Um, I didn't know it because I was that naive. But one thing I always knew when it comes to some of the men I was dating, um, and this is more like my mid-20s to early 30s, which is about the age that Shanice is. Um, none of those men would let me be just like looking like whatever, be a hot mess. I, I know that. I know that. And I think that's kind of what Bro the Brooke Ashley's getting at. You shouldn't be focusing having a roster if none of these men are going to help you when you're down and out. And that's not being a gold digger. That's just knowing your own worth. Okay? <laughs> that's all it is. It has nothing to do with being a gold digger. Which, by the way, if that's, if that's how you live, get how you live. That's not my ministry. I'm not going to be the one who judges you. That's the higher power's job, not mine. But um, as long as everyone's consenting adults and knows what it is, I don't see nothing wrong with it. But what I'm going to say, though, is you shouldn't be dating someone or having someone in your life that or even messing with someone. Really, if you're down and out and they ain't got your back, they shouldn't be in your life. You know, even... Okay, I do have some things going on. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm outside a little bit right now. Um, and some of the people who are, you know, are in my life. I know if I was down and out, they would have my back. I know that. There's no maybe. I know that. But I'm also just not going to be giving, giving the cat out to anyone, everybody. And 
I think that's what she's getting at. Like, that's what the Brooke Ashley was getting at. I was like, look, if you really are that down and out, then maybe you should take a break from doing all that and get your life together and then get back to being outside. Because the priorities are in order. It, that's pretty much all she was calling out. It's a lack of it's a lack of priorities. Um, not really the lack of sex positivity. Because I'm also a sex positivity person too. Like, I get it. We all have needs. But there's just a way to do it. And there's a way of making sure... You're not compromising your standards of living just for that. I'm sorry. My standards of living and my self-worth is up here. That's number one and two before me succumbing to the lust. And maybe you should reevaluate that thinking. But anyway, um... I, 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 I digress, but I, I, had to have, I had to have the Brooke Ashley's back on that one because I love watching her channel. And also, too, like, I agree with what she's saying to a certain extent. Um, I think she's a little bit more, um, I don't know, I want to speak for her, but, like, for me, I agree with that. It's like, hey, you know, there's a way of doing it. And the way you're doing it doesn't seem like it's working for you all the way. But we do find out she has a job now. And then that wraps up the reunion. So, I mean, again, it was kind of lackluster um, to a certain degree. And um, let me recap who we got, who we went over here. So, overall, Preston wasn't really around much in this reunion. And that was kind of annoying. Noelle, same thing. But, like, Nick, yeah. Summer, of course, Jasmine, probably more than she should have been talked about in this reunion. I honestly thought she, should, they, oh, the other thing that kind of bothered me, they didn't talk nearly enough about like her having the baby. I wanted to hear more about that and what is it like for her being a mother now, but we didn't get to hear that, but hopefully we get that next season. Um, Bria, um, we did talk about, talk to her a lot. Jordan. Kind of similar to season was kind of there, but kind of not. Shanice, again, same thing. I've been saying that the whole entire time. Um, Amir, same thing. Alex was only kind of there at the beginning and then he was gone. Um, so cast shakeups, who I, there's a couple of people who I think can go. Um, Cause we need some more single people and we need some more women who hold themselves accountable. And um, less, less toxic ish behavior so I want I kind of want Jordan to go there's no kind of I do want Jordan to go I don't want Jordan to come back I don't I really don't she doesn't bring nothing to the show in my opinion or if she does come come as like a friend of kind of come as like um I wouldn't mind her having the Mariah role let her have the Mariah role where she's around a couple times on, on the house, but I don't think she should be a main cast member. But I think she's going to stick around because she's been on multiple Bravo shows. So clearly the network does like her, so she'll still be around, but she needs to bring more next season. Shanice, I can take it and leave it with her. Um, but I think something needs to give with, with the girls. I think... I don't think all the girls should stay on the show. I think they need new, fresh blood. Um, although I do like the, I do like the three, the, 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 I love the group of Bria, um, Shanice, and Noelle together when they're partying. Because they do seem like they're having a good time. Um, they don't seem as toxic as them three. They seem like they're the turn up, they're the turn up like triplets. So I'm good with that. Amir, you already know. I think he can leave. And Alex, I like Alex, but <sighs> I'm kind of indifferent because he still isn't bringing enough for me. Um, even though I like him and I want him on the show, it's just based off of the showing of this reunion, I'm kind of like, ugh. You, you came in hot, but then after that, you kind of were gone after that. So, 
But anyway, that is my review. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>